How do, how do you do that? Start it. Yeah, I know start it. So Lee, you're saying you want to turn this up like this? Like, like. So how's the sound level? Does it sound good? All right. I'll try. Maybe my voice is louder or whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right. So introduce yourself. Yeah. yeah. Just start from the beginning. All right. So. So uh, I'm Oliver Seldman. I'm a uh, independent or freelance web developer. I work uh, almost exclusively with Drupal now. Um, and so yeah, I was I was trying to solve this problem um, earlier in the week and ran into some issues and the whole situation kind of exemplified um, the positive Drupal experience that um, I've had working with um, well Drupal.org for information about modules and the issue queue and IRC and getting help from people in the middle of nowhere. Um, but so yeah, uh, so the the overall um, the overall task that I wanted to do was something that most people uh, probably encounter in a site. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna demo just a very simple implementation of it here, where I'll take um, a user profile um, with some custom fields on it. Um, like a little bit more advanced than the basic user profile. And I want to take a list of nodes that that, that, that author, of, let's call it an author profile, um, that that author has created and attach it to their profile as well. Um, so, what, what, so that involves a couple of, a couple of uh, modules and techniques. And um, I'll just kind of walk you through a couple things that happen. So um, one of the... Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so I was what I wanted to do was use um, the views attach module and uh, uh, create a view and then attach the list of the list of uh, story nodes to the profile. But um, it, it it didn't seem to be working. I, I I would use an argument with the view. But um, I couldn't quite get the profile to control the view. And uh, I went into the issue queue, and somebody had actually posted the problem I was having, saying, I can't figure it out. Is this a bug? Or, um, and uh, so I, my initial reaction was like, oh, oh, no, I can't use this technique. Um, but I persisted, and I went on IRC. It was like really late, in, like 2 in the morning, something like that. And um, I actually spoke with uh, somebody, um, I have his name here, he's from Node1 um, and in Sweden, and um, he gave me a couple of little tricks to use on IRC and I figured it out, and um, after I figured it out, I came back and I uh, posted a summary of how I did it, um, so that somebody else coming, look, searching on the same issue would kind of have a little walkthrough on what I did and how I solved the problem. Um, so um, that's the intro. Um, the uh, so the uh, um, I just want to go to my uh, list of modules here and show you that um, this is an extremely basic uh, install. I just installed the, m the most recent version. I added a couple modules that I that I like to use. Some that are absolutely necessary, I consider, for every install. Um, admin menu is this menu across the top here to aid in uh, getting around. Um, I use CCK for uh, custom content fields. Um, I used, uh, in this case, content profile, which allows you to use CCK to uh, take over the profile or create uh, more advanced custom profiles with, uh, with CCK. Um, I, uh, I got Devel in here so I could, you'll see, I auto-generated a bunch of nodes with, uh, with dummy text. Um, and then I have uh, Path Auto and Token, um, two other modules which are essential. And in the, in the case of, t excuse me, in the case of Token, um, uh, Content Profile and uh, Views Attach actually require it. So it had to be in there. And, um, and Views, and that's it. And so, um, so you'll see here on my list of users 
that uh, I have a bunch of dummy users and one one Oliver user, but if you will just click on one of them and I, I pre-set up um, some sample profiles just to save a little time here, but you can you can get the uh, get the idea. I actually didn't do anything for the profile. I just created a, a new content type with one additional field, which is the image, just as a kind of a sample. You could uh, include as many additional fields as you want, but this just to kind of show how it works when when it loads. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, well, um, I'll move on for the moment and start talking about some of the other pieces of it here. Um, oh, I think everything I need to do is going to... Okay, we're going to do some creative editing for the video. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, where's Phil? Can I flash the router? Will that help? Yes, I see. Yes. See what you're doing? Yes, see what you're doing. I'm not, it doesn't look like I'm connected to anything. Something. There we go. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> so here's a sample of the. Um, Here's a sample of the, the new profile that I've created. So I'm actually clicking on, you'll notice in the URL, I'm just clicking on the user page and you'll see by default that content profile um, has attached the profile to the user page. You can actually set this up in a number of different ways. You can have it as a tab on the page, you can have it as a separate page, or here it's just attached to the user page. And below this, it's just my history and there's, there's nothing else there. Um, and now you'll see on, I, I generated a whole list of content here, just dummy, dummy content, about 50 nodes. And so now I'm just going to quickly create, show an intro on how to create a view and um, make this attachment happen, and we'll be good to go. Where is the views? All right, here. So um, I'll add a new view. <clears throat> I'll call it um, Profile Stories whatever, it's a node view. And um, I'll just walk you through a couple of simple ways to set up the view. What we'll do is we'll grab the, um, um, I have a, a, a workflow that I use when I'm setting up views, but you can set it up in whatever order you want. First, I'm just gonna filter out the content here. And um, I'm just gonna choose a couple of items. I'm gonna choose node published. So it's only gonna take published content and then node type, so I can choose that it's only gonna you know, select from my story nodes. So uh, node published is yes, and is the node type is one of story. And um, then I'm just gonna add, uh, just gonna add the node title for now, just for, so you guys can get a sense of what, uh, how this might work. But, Theoretically, you could add as many fields to this as you want and display it in um, any number of ways. I think I'm just going to do a list. Um, I don't want the title listed here. And I'm going to have it uh, linked to its node. And you'll see here that we have a list of uh, 10 items. I'm just going to do a couple of little other tweaks to the basic settings. I'm going to uh, change it from unformatted to an HTML list, uh, unordered HTML list. And then I'm going to change the, um, the limit um, to display to zero, which is all of, the, all of the nodes. So you'll see here now I have a list of all, all, of, my, all of my nodes. And um, so uh, here's, the, here's the trick now. Um, what we want to do is we want to um, limit the, the display uh, based on an argument that we're going to pass to the view. And that argument is going to be the user's, the user's ID. And so I'm going to go add an argument, and I'm going to do user's UID. And because I want to throw this on every, on every profile page, I actually want the default um, functionality 
to hide the view unless there's something there. I don't want to show other people's nodes or other, other stuff that might show up on the view. So by default, it's going to require this argument, basically. And um, so now you'll see in the preview nothing showing up because it's actually not getting any arguments. Um, and so now here is the, so this has all just been views. Um, and so now here we're going to add the views attach piece. And what views attach does is it adds, so in, when we go to add a display type like a page or a block, it actually adds a new option in there called uh, node content, which is it, its way of talking about how it attaches um, its content to, to a node. Uh, I don't know if that's the best way to explain it, but that, I, I just clicked this option. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'll see here that what it's done is it's actually added a new section to the view called the node content settings. And um, in this case, um, we actually want to edit a couple of these things. Um, for the node type, we, we're saying we want to embed this display on the following type of node, and we're going to go to this profile node that I created. So now we're basically telling views attach to attach this view to profiles. Um, we want full node, which is the, the build mode, and um, what we want here is this, we want to change this argument that, that, uh, no, that uh, views attach is passing. And right here, it's, it's attempting to pass node ID, but what we actually want it to do is, and this, this is the, the, the trick that the, the guy from node one helped me out with, to, um, to add use tokens. And we're actually going to pass the user ID token from the profile through views attached to the view. And, and that's what's going to affect what shows up. Um, now, there's a huge list of tokens here. So what we're going to do is just have a look in the possible tokens that we can use. And this actually can give you a great idea of other things that this might be used for. It can be used, you can pass any, any one of these bits of information, the month, the author name, um, all kinds of information, um, term information, vocab information, menu information, all of this can be passed to the view to, to be used in some way or another. In this case, uh, if you remember, we're using the, the, the user ID. So I'm just going to grab this token here, the author user ID, copy it, and paste it in here as the token that we want to use. And uh, I can uh, close this up and save that and that's it we're done so now <clears throat> I'll just save this view and if we go back and check out my profile once it's saved you'll see the um, the view attached to the bottom of it theoretically if all things go well so oh, here we go You'll see them listed there. Actually, I'll, I'll make one other quick change here. Well, let's give this uh, this note this uh, this a title. Uh, list of authors stories. And uh, the reason I'm I'm actually doing this here is because there, even if you give this um, if you give this display a title. In this node content settings area, you actually have to tell it to show the title. So that's just one more setting uh, you got to click. But so now we'll save this out, and um, now if we hit refresh, you see there's the title. Obviously, all of these bits can be themed as how you like. It can be, you know, the picture can be pushed off to the side. We can, theoretically, you could use multiple views here. Um, you could use, push these views um, to the page and theme them in a bunch of different ways. Um, and, uh, and I can just show you real quick. Um, so if I'm looking at um, a list of users, can't see where that list of users was. Actually, I'll just go up here. So if, if I click on one of these other dummy users, you'll well, maybe be able to notice that it's a, a different list of nodes attached based on who the user is. Um, 
So that's it. There, there, there were a couple other things that I wanted to mention, which is there are two excellent um, videos using similar techniques using the use attached module with a couple of other modules in combination. Um, in the case of this mustard seed um, media video, it uses node reference um, so that you can uh, and views attached to create um, to create basically do the same thing passing rather than a, the, the profile user ID you pass the node ID and you can grab a bunch of nodes together based on the node ID um, and then there's a video from um, from uh, Jeff Eaton at Lullabot using the same basic uh, combination to create a, 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 a photo gallery using this methodology where you could have a bunch of photo nodes and, and create a gallery node and have the gallery node display all the photos attached to it at the bottom. Um, so there are a couple other resources if you want to watch some videos on some of this stuff. And, um, and also just this, um, the, the, the URL on um, the, the Drupal.org is uh, node 767448. And I actually just quickly go through and describe the steps I just described to you on how to set, uh, set up views attached. And that's it. Uh, were there any questions about any of that? I've got a question. Uh, so I've always wondered the difference between the views attached module and one of those page, build, page builds in the actual views module, which is attachments. OK. Do you have any difference? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Attachments? Sure. Um, so, oops, sorry about that. So if we're looking at, at going back to the views, um, so if we're going back to the views here, what he's talking about is, so in this list of different types of displays that you might have, um, one of the default ones that comes with views is something called an attachment view. And um, without demoing it, actually there, there are a couple of, um, if you want, I can post in the comments, um, a couple of sites demoing how to use views attack. I mean the attachment for views. But um, basically, what I what I would use it for mostly is if I had a view with a list of stories, and I wanted the first item in that view to be different from the other items. So let's say I wanted a, a list view with just the name of the story, but for the first one, I wanted a photo, the title, and the author name. Um, so what I would do is I, I so I create the view with all the content I want. Then you create an attachment view, um, and, and I can just um, I can just show you a couple of quick settings here for it. But so you create the attachment view. You actually I would add additional fields to to the to this particular display type. Um, add the photo. Add the whatever extra content I want. And then when you're done with it, you actually would um, you would tell this view to attach itself here in this setting here and you tell it to attach itself to one of the other displays so yeah you can tell it where you want it to go and you tell it um, which other display you want to attach it to so in, in this case I create you know a list of nodes and then the one node at the top and then there's one other piece that you need to do to get those two to work together and that's that's the offset so what, what you would want to do actually is um, it's within uh, items to display what, what you would do so for your for your for your views attach I'm um, sorry for for the attachment you would leave the offset at zero but for the list you would set the offset to one in this case one but I also have to tell the, the attachment to only display one yeah so yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd have, I mean, you might want to have, so in the case where you wanted to display one, you tell the attachment to display one, and then you offset the other view by however many you want in the attachment. See, so theoretically, you could do two in the attachment and offset it by two for the other so view. So completely different concepts from... Yeah, totally different. I mean, one is attach, using the same view to kind of attach two slightly distinct pieces of information together. And the other one is actually attaching that whole thing to other nodes. Yep. The, the old school way, or the views one way, was using the views get view function yep. and using the PHP input filter. And adding the argument that actually, way. Actually, yeah, and so that was the way to do it back then, and this is just so much more. It's safer, number one, it's safer, and 
because it's not running PHP code every single time the view is loaded, and views to be in caching, so it's a lot faster. Yeah. That's a major benefit. Were there any other questions? All right. Thanks. Uh, where's the setting for this? All the way down at the bottom. Minimized.